the youth. You see that shout that I see being made to the singles, that I see telling everybody, arise and shine. But now, let's look at it in the area of your marriage. Tonight is I must marry. Now, let's look at it in the area. How will you arise and shine? What really is the purpose of marriage? What did God really create marriage to be like? What really is the purpose of marriage? Amen, church. Now, we are looking at marriage using the theme arise and shine. Now, the purpose of marriage, we have the physical and the spiritual purpose. But let's look at the spiritual first. Now, we see that Adam was created in Genesis, in the book of Genesis. Adam was created a son of God, and God made a garden, a garden in Eden, and placed Adam there to walk. Adam was walking, but God saw that this walk was too much for Adam. The walk was overstressing Adam. And what did God do? God caused Adam to sleep, and then took a, one of his ribs, and then formed the human. The human became an helpmate to Adam. It means that one purpose of marriage is for the woman to be an helpmate to the man. But you see, after the fall, everything changed. We have what? A mixed multitude now in the church of God. People's sisters are supposed to be subdued under their husband. Sisters are supposed to be helpmates under their husband. But it is not so anymore. Eve was, sub Eve was subdued under Adam. Eve was there to work with Adam. Eve was there to help Adam. Now I am speaking to the sisters. But what do we have today? Everybody is crying, I must marry. But how many of us are saying that they are, we are ready? That if any man should come and say, this is my husband. Or if I should hear from God at any time, that this is my husband. I will be able to subdue under that man. I will be able to work with the man. To make him fulfill the purpose why God has created him. That is one purpose. The human was made to be a subject to the man. To be what? And help mate. To work with the man. To reduce the stress that what? That was upon him. Now church, you must also note something. 1 Corinthians verse 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Let's us know in verse 3. He gave us a hierarchy of what it should be like. He said, now the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the man is Christ. Now you must understand something. A man is an authority on his own. But every woman must be under authority. That is the reason why marriage continues. You must also note something. I am not saying this because of the brothers are here. But I am telling you because this is scripture. Now when a woman is giving birth to, she comes under the authority of her father. But she must remain under the authority of fatherhood. Why? Because, and this continues in what sense? Because when she grows old, she comes of age and feels she can no longer be under her parents. She wants to go white because of youthful delinquencies. But you must note something. She falls in love, in quotes, and goes under a lot of authority. Still the authority of a man, but this time around is the authority of her husband. Now, church, you must also note something that it doesn't just stop in the authority. Marriage also brings about because in Genesis 1 verse 28, the Bible says, and he blessed them and said, they should go, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. That is one other reason why marriage was given. That was one other reason why marriage was instituted. You must also note something in the book of Amos. The Bible made mention in the book of Amos. He said something there. He said that two are to be together. He said that when one is cold, the other will warm the other. Now, in that area of marriage, you must note something. I won't dwell on that. We all understand that. But let me also pick something in what Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul made mention of his, he made a statement. He said that if any of you feel you can no longer control your, loose, your, your lust, if you, you can no longer control your passion, he said even if she be a widow but young enough to still get married, he said let her get married. These are the purpose of marriage. These are some of the purposes we can give you. But now, let's look at some marriages laid down in the Bible. Some marriages that have been placed down there, but those people did not follow the perfect will of God. And they ended up having problems. They ended up causing problems here on earth. Now, let's look at the past. Then we'll come back to the future. Let's look at the sons of God. Amen, church. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible recorded that what? Man began to multiply the earth. And he said, daughters were born unto them. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. He said, daughters were born unto them. This man, this man that the Bible was speaking of, they were not sons of God. Because in verse 2, it tells us that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took them as wives. Now, there's something I'm bringing out from here. The, daughter, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, the daughters of men, they are speaking of the children of Cain, the daughters of Cain. I want you to remember that Cain is an outcast. 
Cain is not a member of the family of God. Cain is not a member of Adam's family. Cain was not even recorded in the genealogy of Adam in Genesis 5. It means Cain was never a son of God. Now, Cain had daughters, serpent seeds. They were all from the same lineage. They were all serpent seeds. They were all Jezebels. They were all, they were all Semiramids. They had nothing to do with God. These That's were the daughters of men. But now the Bible tell, tells us that the sons of God come married to the daughters of men. Why? Because they saw that they were fair. They were beautiful. That is one thing that has caused a problem. And you see that the Bible recorded that when they got married, why? Because the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. And what? They jingled. They gave birth to what? Wrong seeds. The Bible recorded that they gave birth to giants. And what? The Greek translation of that scripture tells us that giants, the word giants is what? Nephilim. And Nephilim means what? Falling. It means they are fallen sons or, and daughters. They gave birth to fallen children. Children that were not from God. Children that came, but they came in the wrong way. They came from a wrong seed. Why? Because a son of God mingled with a, a daughter of men. Now, there's something I would like you to understand. The sons of God are going to get married. Have you really checked that daughter? Have you really checked if she is a daughter of God? Everybody is shouting, I must marry. You must look at this carefully. That what? Wrong marriages bring to what? Wrong seed. If you as a son of God get married to a wrong daughter, if you get married to a daughter of, to, if you get married to a serpent seed, you will give birth to a wrong seed. It is certain. Every other marriage that went in the will of God, they gave birth to promised sons and daughters. They gave birth to sons of God. They did not give birth to fallen children. Why? Because the marriage was perfect. The marriage was from God. That is what one thing wrong marriages bring about wrong seeds. Church, you must also know something. When we look at another person who almost got involved in marriage, but you must also learn from him. And we really say he, gets in, he got himself married, but we must learn something from him. That other man was Samson. Now let's look at it. We are here to mingle, to jingle. We are here to speak and to discuss about marriage. But now let's look at that same man, Samson. Samson got himself first involved in one relationship. But that relationship was ordered by God, even though it was with a Philistine, somebody who was an unbeliever. God ordered that relationship. Why? That he might prove his calling upon Samson, that he had called Samson to be a deliverer. But Samson mistook that and felt that God's grace was still upon him. And he went into another relationship. When that one failed, he went into another one. And this time around, he fell in the last lap. Now you must know something. It is not just the brothers we are looking at. We are not just telling the brothers you can fall in Delilah's lap. But we also have men who their laughs are like Delilah's. Because there are men who will hold you here. And once they hold you, their emotions flow and you cannot control yourself any longer. Now let's look at this fact because I am not just speaking to the men. And neither am I just speaking to the women. I want everybody to move together. Now look at this thing. When you make the wrong decision, when you follow an unbeliever, I want to believe something which Samson did. Even though it is not written in the scripture. Samson I'll, let me give you this scenario. Something might be believing. I am an Israelite. So if I get married to Delilah, she becomes an Israelite. She will learn our own ways. She will become an Israelite like us. But that was not what happened. Let me let you know, not everybody that go that path succeed. Because Samson was one example that went through that path and had his hair shaven off because his power was taken away from him. His glory was taken away from him. And one thing you must know, ask yourself, all through the time you have been on earth, how many ministers do you know? How many men that were revivalists? How many women that when they speak here, you know that the Lord has spoken, got into the wrong relationship and went from grace to grass? Clap your hand now. Clap your hand when you contend that. No, you don't just rush into relationships like that. You don't just rush and say you want to get married that way. Because that was what happened to Samson. He didn't just lose the power which the Lord had given him. His two eyes were plugged off. Revelation was plugged off. Now, so many people have got into a relationship. And somebody comes up and tells me, love is blind. God forbid, I don't accept that. Love is not blind. Because if you fall in love, there's this old movie they always say, they say we fall in love. When you fall in love, brother, sister, you get injured. Hmm. What Christians do is they walk in love. Christians walk in love. It is their pattern. It is their life. Every step they take is love. And that is why it is. But something mistook that. I went and fall in love and came back with an injury. Shaven hair. His eyes blood off. Let's look at one of Clap the your hand now before you fall in love and get bruised. Clap your hand. Amen, church. Amen, church. Amen. Now we are looking at King Ahab. Now it is said that in Israel, you do not get a wife outside the tribe of Israel. 
But we see King Ahab, a king, got married to a Jezebel. Now, the Bible recorded the end of Ahab and his wife. Ahab got married to the wrong woman. Though Ahab was very rich, Ahab had all the money. But what? He made the wrong choice. There is something that is going on that I would like to throw my advice. Every brother, if you ask them, what is your own problem? It is money. No brother is asking for wisdom. As you mean Ahab had wisdom, he would not have married Jezebel. As you mean Ahab had knowledge, he would not have married Jezebel. As you mean Ahab had understanding, he would not have married Jezebel. Though he had money, but wisdom, knowledge, and understanding was not there. And he fell into the wrong woman. And what? Jezebel introduced other gods into his life. And Ahab was destroyed. For what? The anger of God was kindled upon Ahab. Brothers, do not just ask for money alone. Do not just seek after wealth. Because it is not money that brings a good wife. It is not money that brings a good marriage. That's but right. It is wisdom that comes from God. It is knowledge that comes from God. It is understanding that comes from God. Now, That's church, right. you must also note something. Just as my brother has said, money does not sustain the marriage. You can rush into it. You can win her with the money. But you have that money and she'll still go out looking for other people. Now, you let's look at some other story which we need to understand. And Ananias and Sephira were two couples, so lovely, walking in the church. But something happened. Two of them had wrong visions. Two of them did not have the right focus. And that was why when the move of God was moving, when God was moving in the church, both of them were spiritually blinded. That they couldn't see that any wrong decision could cost them their life. Who are you getting married to? That sister you are getting married to. That sister you are rushing now and say you will get married to. How strong is she spiritually? That brother you are rushing to right now and you are saying you are going to get married to. How strong is he spiritually? Understand something. If a line man leaves a, another line man, they will fall into the ditch. And that was what happened to Ananias and Sephira. Because when they stood and gained at home and told themselves we are going to give the church part of the money for which we got. The husband went in first and said, I have brought all the money. Mm. And Peter was annoyed in the spirit and said, if you lied to God, it would have been better. But how will you come again to the church and lie to the Holy Ghost? And the man slumbered and died. And they took his corpse and went to bury him. As he, they were taking him to go and bury him, the Bible recorded, three hours later, at five, That's at five or at six, three That's hours five. later, the That's wife five. stepped in and they asked her, what is the real amount that this thing was paid for? She also lied the same thing. And the Bible recorded that Peter said that the full step of those who have gone to bury your husband is at the door. They are coming to carry your corpse. And she slumbered and died. That is the end of when you, that is the end of two blind Christians that get themselves involved and say they are getting themselves involved in marriage. Look at that person. You must have somebody that has the eyes that will lead you. Don't just rush into a marriage with two people that do not have focus. That's right, that's right. Clap you must have focus. Church, you must also know something. Let's look at one man that I love so much. The man of faith, Abraham. Abraham didn't really get married to that lady, Haggai. But let's look at the relationship that occurred between them that would have led to marriage. Because Abraham had enough reason to marry that woman. The woman gave birth to a child. That child grew almost up to eight years before Isaac, was, Isaac even came out. Now, if Abraham decided, he would have just said, I am going to marry you. And the wife would say nothing about it. But you must understand something. Who was her guy? What was her character? Why did Abraham not change his mind and say, let me join this woman as a second wife? Our guy had not yet become Abraham's wife. She was just having the baby on her stomach. And she started becoming a mistress to her wife, to her, her madam. She has started becoming a mistress to Sarah. Now, Sarah will tell her, go and do this, and Agai will look at her and, and walk away. Now, that was respect that was missing. And I believe Abraham saw that beforehand and left her to remain a servant to, um, to Sarah. Now, looking at all these things, you understand that we have learned from all these people. Now, let's look at people who their relationship or even their marriage gave them benefits. People who their relationship or even their marriage was of advantage to them. I am still going to look at Abraham and I want to pick now the opposite of Agai, which is Sarah, his wife. Sarah called her husband Lord. I don't think you understand what it means. It means that his worst was a final. Meaning that she gave him the full respect that he deserved. She understood, though she is not in our time, though she didn't have the scriptures to start reading, she understood without even seeing what God had written for us presently. So many of us are seeing it in 1 Corinthians 11.3. The 
the man has the authority over the woman. But in her own time, she didn't see it. But she stood on it. And she respected her husband. And let me tell you, for that respect, it is not love that sustains you in the marriage you want to get into. After love that we attract you, after the beauty that we attract you, it takes more than love to stay in it. And that was what sustained the woman, Sarah, because she had respect for her husband. That was why the man could not even marry another person. That was why even before he could even think of turning to another person, Sarah was the one that forced him to go and meet her guy because of the respect he had for her. Now you must also understand something, looking at two of them still. Why did Abraham stay for almost a hundred years and didn't think of marrying another person? Sisters, let's ask ourselves and be serious. Let's ask ourselves and think over it. Why did he stay for almost a hundred years and he was still hoping on a woman that was almost dead, getting close to clocking 99 years? Clocking 99 years and a man stood and still had faith that the prophecy that God gave him 25 years will still come to pass through this woman. That shows us that some things are lacking presently. When you get two people get involved in a marriage and tomorrow, six months after, we start reading in the newspaper, the marriage has broken down. What is really happening? But you must understand something. When two people walk in the perfect will of God, just as Abraham and Sarah walked, because they had the vision, they had the focus. Even at the age of 100, you know, one day I sat down and I was thinking, I said, what will make an old man at the age of 100 start thinking of making love with his wife? He took faith. He took faith because if he had not slept with his wife, she can't have beds. She can't give beds. He took faith and that faith saw them through. Now, that faith brought about a seed, a seed of promise because they were moving in the divine will of God. That seed of promise married another person, Rebecca. Praise the Lord, George. Clap no. your hand now. Let's glorify God. If you have been a defender, you contend us. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Now, you see that what? They gave birth to a seed of promise, Isaac. And Isaac was due also to get married. And Abraham, being a good father, what, sent his, his servant, Eliezer, to go to his mother's side to get a wife for Isaac, according to what has been said, and what has been given to them as a law. Now, Abraham sent Eliezer. Eliezer went to that land to seek for that woman. Now, it is also recorded something that what? Eliezer went to that land. But there's something you must know, brothers. Eliezer was acting on behalf of Abraham. Eliezer was also acting on behalf of Isaac. But you, you, there's, something that is, there's something that we must look at. Eliezer had a covenant with his God, with the God of Israel. Eliezer believed in the God of Israel. Eliezer seeked for a sign. That's right. Eliezer seeked for a sign. He did not just rush into the marriage. He did not just go and look for the girl and bring any girl and take her back to what? To, the, to, to Abraham's son. But what? He seeked for a sign. And what? He asked God to give him that sign. But when the Rebecca came, what did she do? She fulfilled what he had said. But it is not only fulfilling what, what Eliezer asked for. Rebecca had what? Respect. Rebecca did not argue with the word of Eliezer. Rebecca was ready to even do more than what he has asked her to do. Why? Because she was trained up in the perfect way. She was trained up to be a true wife. But here we see our sisters in the wrong way. Now I'm not just throwing it hard on the sisters, but I want us to look deep into ourselves. How many of us are ready to say, ah, if anybody should come and tell me, ah, this is God's will. He said I should get married to you and have seek for a sign. Go and also pray for the sign. And then you see the sign. Will you be able, will you be ready to get married to that brother? No matter how he looks. That is one thing. Will you have that respect to say, okay, no, let me follow the will of God. And yet, you want to get married. Now, church, you must understand something. Still on that woman, Rebecca. Now, Rebecca, there's one thing you must understand about her that touched me so much. Rebecca did not get married because of that day. That was the day that the Holy Ghost came upon her to go and do those work. There was preparation at the background. That's right. Now, you don't expect yourself to get married to a rich man all of a sudden overnight if you are not prepared, if you are not schooled back home. Now, you don't tell yourself that you are going to get married to a rich man if you are not schooled back home. See, there's something we always say, and there's a, a scenario that was given to me. I always think about it. Now, a lady who refuses to continue her education, a lady who stays around, and the only people she keeps seeing every day is the bus driver because she's selling Akara, the conductor that is there, and then the mechanic. Now, who do you think is going to approach her for marriage? 
But think about it, a bank executive that is walking through and fro, you must not even be a bank executive. Even if you have your little business and you are making sense out of it, it is an initiative that moves the world. Now, think about somebody who works. I know of somebody who fries chim chim. Now, she fries chim chim, but she goes to companies to go and sell. Now, there's a difference between that lady and somebody who is sitting, sitting down there and is selling, sitting down on the street and is selling chim chim. Because she goes to the bank and one day she might walk into one bank to go and sell it and somebody will turn and say, I like that woman, she's enterprise. There was preparation that was done behind. Now, what is your preparation done? Stay on Rebecca. Amen, George. Now, Rebecca, like I said, Eliezer seeked for a sign. And what? That sign was given to him. But our brothers, do we really have a covenant with God? Are we really stick to our God? Or are we waiting for a prophet to come and pick us up to tell us, oh, this is your wife? No, it is not done so. It is not always done so. We have, we have some people that God will say, okay, reveal to the prophet, and then they will point the wife. But it is not on everybody. Some of us have to stick with God. Some of us have to seek for a sign to get that lady, which, which we want in our heart. We have to seek for a sign. But how many of us are ready to seek for that sign? This is the question. Church, you must still also know one thing which we all know. This is it. William Bram was sitting down with his son. He was about having cancer. And a man walked in with his wife. And when they came in, the man's wife was pregnant. And the man was complaining and telling him, we are not ready for this child. Prophet, what should we do? I want, should we take an abortion because we are thinking of taking an abortion? William Bram told them, go and do the abortion. They walked away. Another person came in and stood before him and said, Prophet, my wife, we have a child that we are not prepared for. And the only option now is abortion. Should we take an abortion? William Brown turned to him and said, do not remove that seed. And he told them to walk away. Now the child stand, stood behind him and got confused and started asking, Father, you told one person, go, do abortion. You told the other one, don't do abortion. William Brown turned to his son and said, both of them the heart was what the Lord was looking at. Because one had come and he has sealed his heart. There's nothing with Abraham was going to tell him, that first person that came, that will change his mind. And that is what happened when you meet a prophet. That is why it is very important that you must have a covenant with your God. Because when you meet a prophet, he tells you, if you come, your heart is already sealed. The Lord will minister to him, tell him to go that way. And that is why so many people have gotten themselves involved in relationships they shouldn't get themselves involved. And many of them are crying, but the Lord told me that he is my husband. But the Lord told me he is my wife. Let's look at another person, Esther. Now, let's look at Esther. Clap your hand, not you contender. Now, let's look at Esther. One thing, you must know about, one thing you must know about Esther is this. Esther was a woman, a virgin for that sake. Now, Esther was a woman now brought in with other virgins prepared for the king but they were kept under chamberlains now when it was time for them to go and meet the king all people came and told the king and told the chamberlains what they wanted to wear but esther told the chamberlain anything you give me that you think is suitable to stand before the king with that is what I will go with. But I look behind and I look forward and I look at our present and I get confused over what is happening presently. Because we have a chamberlain in this time. We have the seven church age messenger. We have somebody that is speaking the word of Revelation 10, 7. We have a word that has been preserved for us in Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. But what is people saying? Because the man stood with Abraham and he said, this is God says the Lord to the end time message believers. He said, Thus says the Lord, Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, do not put that which belongs to a man. Thus says the Lord unto the women, it, Exodus 21, he said that when you put that earring, it's a sign of slavery. But how many people are listening to us? You must understand one thing also in Genesis 35 verse 2, Jacob said something. He told his household, he said, put off every strange God from you because we are going to Bethel to meet with the Lord. But in verse 4, mind you what he said, is every strange God. In verse 4, the family knew what he was saying. They put off everything. Go and read that scripture. The Bible says, and they put their earrings with it. Now, why do I pick about that? That scripture made me understand, understood something. That was what I understand from it. I was walking to, through bride assembly. I was entering through the security gates over the bridge. And then a sister came on a Tuesday service. And she stood and they told her, sister, please put off your earring. Without that, if you don't put it off, you can't enter inside. And she looked and she said, that though I have come with a body, you know, 
But if it will take me to put up my earring, I'm not putting it off. And I thought this woman was joking. And he said, Sister, if you don't put it off, you can't enter. She walked out and went out and didn't attend service that day. That lets us know that jewelries have become a God to so many people. Jewelries have become a God to so many sisters. That is why a sister will go continually. Almost every day she's checking her jewelry box because as she's going out, she must wait. But every day, ask her, did you communicate with God? Every day, ask her, did you communicate with God? Now, when we look at all these things, you must also understand, brethren, the Lord had a reason. The Bible says, does, not, does nature not even teach you? Sister, if your hair is, you have a hair, but it is not touching your back, please don't extend it. Nature teaches you that that is where your hair stops. Please manage it and make it look beautiful. The Lord will bless you. But you must understand something in Hebrews 13 verse 4. And it says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But adulterers and whoremongers, God will judge. The, Lord the book bless. of Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 23 tells us this is for both the brothers and the sisters. He said the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. Reproving of instructions, the way of life. To keep you away from every evil woman. 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 This is the watchword. The law. This is the law. It is given to you to keep you away from every evil woman. And it is given to you, sisters, to keep you away from every evil man. And the Lord will bless you. God bless the church. Clap your hand on church. Clap your hand very far away. Defy. If you defy, you need to place the name of the Lord now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we take special number? Okay, let those um, when worship vessels. Worship vessel, can we have your special number now? You came here today. For the praises of the Lord. Move to the center. He's in this place. You will never leave. Same way that you came here today. For the praises of the Lord. He's in this place. You will never live the same. Also, want to put your hands on your chest and say, I will never live the same way that I came here today. For the praises of the Lord, 